saw a really funny comment in the latest video when I did the face reveal saying I'm surprised he's not really Napoleon. If I ever get to a million subscribers, I will do a full video in a Napoleon costume. So if you wanna watch that, you gotta subscribe. This is an A4 paper sheet, and it's the standard paper size for everywhere in the world. But this is a US letter paper sheet, which is the same thing, but in the United States. Only a handful of countries follow this US model, the US of course, but then also Canada, Mexico, Chile, Colombia, Venezuela, Central America, and the Philippines. And along with their difference in paper sizes, they're also different in so many other ways that they measure things compared with other countries across the world. They use gallons instead of liters, miles instead of kilometers, inches instead of centimeters, and Fahrenheit instead of Celsius, not to mention the 12-hour cycle with the AM-PM system instead of a 24-hour cycle. So why? Why are they so different in seemingly every single way that they measure things when compared to the rest of the world? The reasons are kind of connected and they're pretty interesting. And that is what we are going to find out in this video. Let's start with that one, the paper, first understanding why it is that the US actually came to use it. The US letter is the US's standard document size, which measures 215.9 millimeters wide and 279.4 millimeters tall, or 8.5 by 11 inches. Further ahead in the video, I'm also going to explain why they use inches instead of centimeters. While the rest of the world uses the A4, which measures 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters, 8.27 inches by 11.69 and i think these size comparisons instantly give us a hint about how this might be connected precisely to the fact that one of them uses inches and the rest use centimeters maybe us printers were just built in a way that couldn't really allow for centimeters to be the measuring unit they weren't precise enough for that type of cut and in fact the official reason of why the us came to use the paper size that they do use according to the american forest and paper association goes a little hand in hand with this idea they state that paper used to be made by hand and the molds that it was made from measured 44 by 17 inches this was used to create eight 8.5 inch by 11 inch pieces of what became known as letter size. At the same time, the rest of the world also used their own paper sizes in the hundreds or thousands, depending of where you were in the world and what type of printers were available and used. But at one point, everybody realized maybe it makes sense for us to come up with a single measurement that we can all use. And so they did, creating what became known as the ISO 26, an international paper standard all of which have the same aspect ratio, which is based on the square root of two over one. And this allows for the fact that when you fold one of those pieces of paper in half, or when you cut it in half, the two new halves maintain the same aspect ratio as the original piece of paper, switching from a zero to a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and so on. And while this only came to be in around the end of the 20th century, the advantages of using a square root to ratio for a piece of paper dates a long way back to around 1786. It was in this year at least mentioned in a letter by a German scientist that was discussing the topic with a colleague. Leave it to the Germans to come up with the most efficient way to fold a piece of paper in half. In addition to the aspect ratio advantage, it also had the obvious advantage of making paper production, stocking, and document reproduction cheaper and easier anywhere else in the world. And so by the year 1975, almost everybody in the world adopted it, but the US didn't. And the reason why is a little uncertain, and I think we can only really speculate about it. I think it's fair to say that they were used to having the US letter, it worked for them. The US are so big that they kind of exist within their own little microcosms. And so maybe they didn't think it was worth it to have their documents easily reproduced somewhere else in the world. Maybe now they regret it since we have a more globalized economy. But I think the main reason must really be the fact that their printers were made for inches. And so it would have been expensive to replace all of them. Now, before we keep going, a quick message from today's sponsor, Saley. Saley is a new eSIM service app brought to you by NordSecurity, the makers of NordVPN, great friends of the channel. 
On Sailey, you can choose from several affordable eSIM plans in over 150 countries. In case you don't know, an eSIM provides an internet connection wherever you travel and saves you money on roaming fees by being local. Here are the top advantages that it provides. First, concentrating this in a single app, you eliminate the need to download and install new eSIMs in each country you visit. You save time at the airport by not having to wait to buy a physical card, you avoid scams, and you ensure compatibility. Plus, you have 24-7 support. If you buy it at a random store, nobody will ever follow up with you to make sure that it works. If you've ever been lost abroad or desperate for a Wi-Fi connection, you know what a difference a local eSIM card can make in those situations. So far, I've only traveled inside Europe, but as me and my fiance plan trips in other places like Asia or Africa, this becomes super useful. For instance, she really wants to go to Rwanda and through Sailey, we can just buy a local eSIM and guarantee our phone and internet access there. Because with a Sailey eSIM, you will always have a connection when you need it. So go to Sailey.com slash knowledge and get 15% off your first purchase and be connected no matter where you go in the world. And now let's get back to the video. So now let's move on to another difference, which for me is the most baffling of all, Fahrenheit versus Celsius, because in this case, the US are pretty much the only country in the world that uses it. There's a few US influenced Caribbean islands and Pacific islands that do too, plus Liberia, which was kind of a US colony at some point, so it makes a little bit of sense. Let's begin by understanding what the difference is between the two models. The Celsius or centigrade scale is based around the fact that zero degrees Celsius is the point where water freezes and 100 degrees Celsius is the point where water boils. While the Fahrenheit scale measures the boiling point of water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit and the freezing point at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature it measures is obviously the same, it's just scaled different. And when you have these two side-by-side -side thermometers, you can really kind of visualize it and understand how wider spread the Fahrenheit scale is. You convert one to the other by deducting 32 from the Fahrenheit temperature and multiplying the result by five over nine, which is a super confusing method in my opinion. Both of them are pretty old systems. Celsius was developed by Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius and Fahrenheit by German physicist Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit. I feel like we should go back to naming inventions after the last name of the inventors instead of having to come up with some weird cool brand name. I think this is much cooler. The reason why the US came to adopt it was the fact that Fahrenheit was widely used in Britain and the British Empire before they decided to switch to Celsius. And so when they arrived in America, they brought that system with them. But then most of the world started switching to Celsius. And the reason that many people point to is the fact that the Celsius scale integrates well with the metric system, maybe because of the zero to 100 logic. If you take this into account, maybe it makes sense that the US didn't implement it because they don't use the metric system. But then again, Britain doesn't really use the metric system either, and they still switched from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So how valid of an excuse is that? Early in the 20th century, some researchers in the US pointed to the fact that Fahrenheit is a more intuitive scale for people to describe the temperature that is felt on the outside. So if you have zero degrees Fahrenheit, it's a pretty cold day. And if you have 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it's a very warm day. But I live in Europe and zero degrees is freezing, 40 degrees is scorching hot, and people just adapt the perception of the numbers on the scale to whatever temperature it is. So I also think that's not a very valid reason, but I do understand the fact that the Fahrenheit scale is a little wider, so maybe it's more precise in describing the temperature that you actually feel. In summary, the US didn't adopt Celsius because they didn't use the metric system, and also because they actually thought that Fahrenheit was a little better, and they were used to it. Which brings us precisely to another difference of the US, which is arguably behind the other two that I just mentioned, imperial versus metric. And the uniqueness of it is very similar to the temperature one, because almost every single country in the world uses the metric system, with units such as meter, liter, and gram to measure distance, weight, liquid volume, and mass. The exceptions are the United States, Burma, Liberia, and the UK, which sort of uses a mixed model, although I never really understood which parts of each system they use. If you know, just let me know in the comments. These countries use the rival imperial system, or at least a version of it, which instead of meters, liters, and grams, uses other measuring units like feet, inches, gallons, and pounds. 
So now let's understand when and how each of these systems came to be. The metric system was developed in France in around 1795. It was the time of the French Revolution and after it, the French government asked scientists to come up with a single measuring system that could unite the various measuring systems that existed at a local level and sort of unify the country in the way that they measured things. And so they did. The meter was developed by measuring one tenth million of the quadrant of the Earth's circumference running from the North Pole to the equator through Paris. Its method for scaling and dividing is much simpler. One kilometer equals a thousand meters and each meter equals 1000 millimeters, 100 centimeters or 10 decimeters. The same thing applies with kilograms and liters. One kilo equals a thousand grams and one liter equals 1000 milliliters. It makes the measuring of things much easier and especially more accurate. While the imperial system got its name from the British Empire, in which it was widely used from 1824 onwards until the year of 1965. And while it is kind of confusing, especially for an outsider, as I'm going to mention in a little bit, it does make a little sense because at the time the British Empire had provinces all over the world, and all of these places use their own ways to measure things. Sometimes they even use the same terms, but a pound in the UK could be different than what a pound in South Africa was. And so they created this unified system to standardize all of those values, which perhaps justifies the strangeness that they have, at least for me as an outsider, because it is kind of confusing to learn that one mile equals 1,760 yards, one yard equals three feet, and one foot equals 12 inches, when one inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters. To make it more confusing, there's a few key differences between US imperial system and the imperial system used in Great Britain. For instance, when it comes to liquids, one cup is 240 milliliters in the US, but 250 milliliters in the UK. So why doesn't the US just switch to the metric system since the majority of the world did too? Well, the main reason seems to be connected with the fact that the US customary system was in use at the time of the Industrial Revolution. So American industries from their very first moment were based on this measuring system. Because of that, businesses have been against the idea of switching to metric every time that the government has tried doing so because it would mean a big economic cost for them with little to no benefit. However, despite that lobbying, the US government still tried to do it and it was around the same time that the US switched to Celsius and to their mixed model. The entire world was uniting around the metric system and so the US thought that they should do the same. It would make economic and scientific cooperation much easier. And so Congress passed a law in 1975 called the Metric Conversion Act that was to begin the process of metrification, setting up a metric board to supervise the transition. But they made a key mistake. They made it optional instead of mandatory. And so people didn't like it, so they didn't use it, and the process failed. A quote from the time writes how motorists rebelled at the idea of highway signs and kilometers, weather watchers blanched at the notion of reading a forecast in Celsius, and consumers balked at the prospect of buying poultry by the kilogram. And to be honest, I get it. I remember when I was like five years old and Portugal switched from our currency to the euro, it was so confusing to adapt to a new monetary system if we were to suddenly switch the way that we measured things, the way that we weighed things, the way that the signs looked on the road when we're driving. I think I would be against the two because of how confusing it would be. And so in 1982, the metric board was dissolved only seven years after they started to try implementing it. And they just kind of accepted that this was going to be one more thing in which they would be different from the rest of the world. Maybe they just felt that it was too late to change. But despite this, the accurateness and arguably the superiority of the metric system is made evident by the fact that researchers in the US still use it. And it's also used by the US military. Some people argue that even for everyday people, it would be more useful, but people seem to disagree, and I guess they're in their own right to do so. In addition to these, the US also has a few other things in which they're different from the rest of the world. For instance, their date format, writing it in month, day, year instead of day, month, year, which I guess is related to the fact that they read it as November 11th of 2024 instead of the 11th of November of 2024. But for me, it is a little confusing that it doesn't scale up as it goes, you know, day, month, year, and it's month, day, year. It would be almost as crazy as saying it's the 44th week of the year 2024, day 11 of the month of November. Kind of sounds like a date that Tolkien would write for something in Middle Earth. 
They also use a 12 hour cycle with an AM PM system instead of a 24 hour cycle. Although the US military also uses the 24 hour cycle because it's more precise and less subject to confusion. Or stuff like their floor numbering, calling the ground floor the first floor and the first floor the second floor, while for most of the world it's the ground floor and the first floor. But this isn't exclusive to the US, I know a lot of other countries do it as well. So that's pretty much it. The US are different from the rest of the world in many things, like their paper size, their temperature scale, and most of all, the way that they measure things. The reasons why seem to be the historical implementation of these models, and then the subsequent opposition by businesses to change, as well as the opposition by regular people, because they're just used to the old ways, and they either prefer it or they just don't want to change. What do you think about this? Should they keep these old systems or should they just change it and get in tune with the rest of the world? Let me know in the comments, along with any other unique things that you know of, not necessarily of the US, but just unique ways of countries doing things that set them apart from everybody else. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'm really enjoying this new format where my face is here because I feel I can really dedicate myself to these specific and more niche topics while I connect more directly with you in the audience. Remember, if you want to see me dressed like Napoleon <laughs> in a Napoleon costume, remember to subscribe. If I get to 1 million subscribers, it's a long shot, but if I do, I will dress up with that costume. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me directly. It's a pretty cool little community that we're building there and it's growing. So if you want to be the next one to join, make sure to click the link in the description. I share extra content, behind the scenes looks, sometimes the early access to videos. And I also interact with you. Like this week, I asked them to vote on which thumbnail to use for this video. So if you want to join, make sure to do so. Either way, thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time for more general knowledge. You guys like the Moomin Cups? My girlfriend has a collection of them. Maybe I should make a general knowledge collection. <laughs> I don't know.